Hi everyone, this is my tutorial to tuning Motronic 4.1 fitted to the Alfa Romeo 75 Twin Spark. This is a Pentium 3 that I had to pull out um, because it has a parallel port, parallel printer port, which is that pink one right there. You'll need one of those to be able to use the programmer. Okay, so this is the programmer. Got the parallel port plugged in here and uh, USB for power only plugged in there. Okay, so this is the, uh, the programmer. Just a couple of things to mention. This VVP switch here tells the programmer what kind of chip uh, it is reading. So it needs to be set to reflect what is shown on screen. Um, we've chosen the parallel programmer here because it is the cheaper of the of the two. You can get a USB programmer as well, but they are more expensive. Now I've got the parallel port plugged in to the back of the computer with the USB connected as well. Let's turn on the PC and uh, check the lights on the, the programmer. Should have two lights that come on. One indicating that you've got power the other indicating that you have a data connection so the red's data, yellow's power okay and this is the uh, the Alpha 75, this is an 89 model um, so we're going to be changing the rev limiter on this car just to uh, show the process of uh, editing the, the ECU's EEPROM now this is a right hand drive 75, Australian delivered uh, but the, the ECU should always be in the left hand left hand side passenger compartment just underneath kick panel underneath the carpet and underneath the kick panel. Um, so this is with the kick panel and the carpet removed. So you can see there's a couple of bolts there that show you where the kick panel is mounted. You just undo those, pull the kick panel away. This is the connector for the, the ECU harness. Um, so there's a little plastic tab just uh, going through the metal tab there. You need to pull the metal tab away um, to release the plastic tab on the harness. And then the ECU will pull out on an angle like so. This is the 108 ECU fitted to the yeah, 75. Okay, so the ECU has a few prongs around the perimeter. They all need to be opened up, um, just with a flathead screwdriver. And then you're, you're able to uh, take the, the top cover off. So with the top cover off, we have the uh, plastic, plastic protection sheet on top. Just remove that for now. Now we've got two two boards here, they need to be separated at the back. So there's uh, two pins on either side next to the data lines. Just uh, get anywhere on the circuit board, try not to damage anything, and uh, just pop them, pop them apart like so. Now there are two tabs at the top here, which I can't remove with one hand, but I'll just point them out. You just need to lift the board clear of those and slide the board away. So we slid the board away, just twist it over on itself like that. That's the analog board, and that is the digital board. Now that little one there is the EEPROM, that's what stores the, the binary. So we want to take that out and uh, have a play with that. So you usually remove this with a flathead screwdriver, um, but I'm using a key in this instance. I recommend using a screwdriver, um, it's a lot easier. Just be careful when removing the, the EEPROM that you don't stab yourself. Um, those pins are quite sharp and they do hurt when they go through your fingertips. So this is with the EEPROM removed. Um, and this particular one is the 604 binary, so the last three digits of uh, this particular tune is 604. 
um, and there's other tunes like the 191 which is better for better f a better tuning bass uh, because it, you, it seems to be developed with less emissions in mind okay so we've got the EEPROM and you just chuck it into the programmer making sure that the, the little dip at the top of the, program, of, the, of the EEPROM is facing upwards towards the hold down switch so just like that pop it in on the first hole and just double check that you've got four slots free on the top down the hold down so it can't move okay now the v VP switch needs to be altered to uh, that of the 27C256 chip which we have on display here Okay, so just on a quick test to make sure that the, the hardware is connected properly and the programmer is getting power. Now we select it on device, going to EEPROM, 27C, and chosen the 27C256 setting. Now you do need to update that with the VPP settings, which I will show you shortly. Now this is just reading the chip. So this is reading in the binary on the factory chip. It's taking a little bit of time because this, this old computer, this old Pentium, uh, can't handle the video software very well. Now we've got chip read OK, which tells us that we successfully read the chip. If we click into buffer, we can see the 020C starting hex tells us that it's probably read just fine. Um, scroll down the bottom, you can see the FF is just empty, um, which is completely normal. So we'll go save. Go to low. Just give it any name. Try and keep it uh, to a naming convention like 604. That's the name of the binary we have. Just go save. There we go, that's extracted the binary from the, the factory EEPROM. Now we clear the buffer just to get rid of everything we've just read. See everything goes to FF, which means clear. So we've successfully read the, the factory bin. Um, now we're going to remove it, let's put it somewhere safe. Okay, so uh, we've got Tuna Pro open. Uh, when you first start this, you won't have uh, the parameter tree coming up because you wouldn't have chosen the, the XDF file. The XDF file is just a way for Tuna Pro to interpret a binary. Um, and make changes easier uh, to certain parameters. So if we go to XDF, we go to select XDF, you navigate to the folder that you saved uh, Festi's XDF file, um, and then uh, then this will open up for you. Now, without a binary, there's, uh, there's no data for the XDF to read, so uh, we need to go File, Open Bin. Bin is short for binary, for those who are wondering and uh, alpha ts191 bin so we're going to be editing the 191 bin um, so open that up now so we've got our ts191 bin loaded uh, as the binary the xdf file as the 191 xdf you can use the 191 xdf for the 604 binaries as well because they have the same structure uh, you'll just find that certain certain parameters uh, are a little bit different so if we open up scalars, um, we're going to go to RevLimitSoft 
um, and we can see the factory rev limit for the soft rev limiter is uh, 6320 for testing purposes we're going to change that down to 3080 yep um, and uh, just hit we'll leave this open for now we'll uh, go to the, the soft limit timer we change down the timer to uh, 0.3 seconds so this means the, car, the engine can only exceed 3080 rpm for 0.30 of a second um, before the counter starts again uh, you'll see that in the, the test video so we go save save now we've done and done the edits here uh, we do have control of the VVT mechanism which is pretty pretty good news um, so whenever you put custom cams in there and you're going to keep the VVT you can now change when it can engage or where it can't engage um, everything else in here we haven't really explored yet with testing so uh, yeah if you want to try this out just stick to the rev limiter and the VVT unless you know what you're doing um, okay so we're going to save this new new binary so we go file save binary as and we'll just call it let's call it 3080 go save now this saves as a 32 kilobyte um, binary and we because we're writing to a 512k chip we, uh, we do need to, to stack it so uh, this is the easiest way to to get the ECU to read it um, the ECU technically reads the last 25 K of the 512 chip uh, but stacking the binary just writes the same binary twice in both positions um, so we go to tools bin stack a splitter so, uh, and uh, what we're going to do is these are the two positions so that's the first 256 K and that's the other 256 K um, so we go browse and just uh, select the one we just saved, so the 3080 bin, put that in position 0 and do the exact same again for position 1 so these are the two binaries that are going to be stacked on top of each other so the two binaries are 32 kilobyte um, and the chip size is 64 kilobyte which equates to 512k um, block size just leave as 32 so let's make sure these are set and uh, then yeah just set your your output file just follow the convention and just so you know this is the this is the stacked version just put underscore stacked at the end of the file name um, and then hit stack um, and that's the, the binary ready to be written to a 512k chip okay close this off now this is the flash chip that we're going to be using it's known as a 27SF512. Now it's twice the size of the original EEPROM, but it is flash memory and it can be erased within seconds. So it's very easy to uh, to use and reuse. So with a little dip on the top, we're going to put this back into the EEPROM reader. Tighten it down. That's locked in. Now we're going to have to change the VPP again to reflect the new flash EEPROM. Okay, so uh, this is the William EEPROM programmer. I'm going to choose the new EEPROM that we're writing to. Um, when you choose the new new ROM type, remember to change the VPP. Okay, now we've got to set the jumper settings. So we click erase, now we've got to jump these two pins up in the top right, just for a couple of seconds um, when that comes up. So hold those two pins, jump, hit OK. As long as they're jumped, then uh, erase and check devices empty will move from 0% through to 100. If it stays at 0%, then you know you haven't jumped them correctly, and you need to try again. Wait for this to finish. And 
nearly done. This uh, this Pentium can't really handle the video studio uh, load too much. Okay, so we go up to open. We're going to open up the stacked binary that we made in Tuner Pro. Once that's opened up, we'll go to program the chip. It is recommended to just do a blank check to make 100% sure there's nothing on the chip. So this will just double check that the chip is full of double F's. Okay, device is empty. We know for sure the device is empty. We can now uh, program it. So, click on the little lightning bolt for program, and that'll program the alpha ts underscore 191 underscore 3080 underscore stacked dot binary to, to the 512 flash chip. If you do encounter any errors programming, just make sure that the VPP setting uh, is exactly the same as on the program itself. You can see where the on, on label is, that uh, there's an on label on the, the actual switch too, so just make sure they're exactly in the same position. Now this is verifying the chips to make sure that it was programmed to OK. Again, if this error is out, it's probably because of the VPP switch. As long as it's all set correctly, you shouldn't have any trouble. Okay, device verified okay. That means our chip is all ready to go. Okay, now that our chip has verified and read okay, it's time to remove it. And uh, chuck it into the ECU. So just remember the dipped end needs to match up with the dipped end on the EEPROM socket. And then just line it up, yeah, make sure the pins line up and slot it in. So we're out the road, this is first gear. Now we set the left soft limiter to be at 3000 RPM. So if we rev up to 3000 RPM, see it's a bit violent, but uh, it's definitely red out chip. So I just took the car out for a run and tested out there the soft limiter. It's a bit violent set at 30 milliseconds, so um, I'm just going to show you while it's sitting here stationary. So if we rev up, See, it's cutting every 30 milliseconds. It's cutting in at 3080 RPM and then resetting. So there we go, successfully changed the, the soft limiter on the, uh, the Alpha 75.